to regroup after Saros uses his flash. Now, Scout overcommits here. That's fair. But considering he's got a trap. Wait, 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 wait. This is amazing. They've done this in complete darkness. They've gone over the wall. And with the Heimerdinger, they're going to secure this. If they get this Baron, EDG knows something is up. They're gonna find their way into the pit as it drops down below 2,000 HP. Detonation, focus me, lose the way! Goggler. And blue team has stolen Baron Nash of the words on your screen, Rain True. The plan seems so solid, but Steel evaporates in the blink of an eye. And Scout does what his name suggests. He smells out the Baron, he dives. Wanted to give this thing a try. And it's it's really complicated, intricate thing. As you're getting close to a fight, what you need to do is see if I can get this. You, yeah, you press R. That's all you really got to do. And then you can just run at the guy faster, and then your damage is higher. And you shouldn't really be doing that after you start hitting it or get to the fight late. So as I wait for this to time out, I'll see if I can uh, get it again. And there's a, a lot of combos that kind of come after this. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and do the full combo. I'm going to press R and then drop all my damage on there. And it's really simple. So you kind of press R, and then from there, you kind of just mash your face on the keyboard. And you just kind of do that for a little bit. And uh, there you go. That is how you play Aatrox. Uh, in pro play. Yeah, the, there we go then. Um, coming up next, we'll hear from Jankos as... Coming in here, Sayos gonna face check, dashes out of the way. Oh, Stazel's in there. Just zips right in to start the fight off. Sneaky now going in with the killer instinct. He's riding Licorice in. What a delivery from Cloud9. And you can see how the team fights are supposed to work. A big flank, a great engage. And now it's a 3v5. Around Baron as well. C9 says, stuff the mid turret. We're going back to Baron. Licorice over the top. C9 will force them into the pit. And eyes on Zazel has the splash. Hex flash, what a play! Burns one diamond! It's the target they want. They get him down. They'll get Kira as well. The rookie comes up massive for Cloud9. And finally, they're able to get the flanks there looking for Cloud9. Turn the game on its head. They're going to grab themselves the Baron, and they're going to pick up a 7,000 gold lead. And NA, if any of you are awake at this ungodly hour, <laughs> reminder, it is not over yet, but this is how the wins at Cloud9 picked up. Legends coming up, and then we can see if Detonation Focus Me can answer with a win of their own when we return for game two. They know that EDG are the favorites, but they're coming in with comfort, and they're coming in looking to create the upset. You can also see priority in the bot, but a skirmishing going on. Vivid very, very low. Might be taken down here. EDG looking to find that early aggro. They've got it! Oh, they are snowballing this bottom lane completely out of control. Hextech ultimatum down on a scout. DFM safe. Talk about that more in a second as we see this one play out. So there's the initial consume, the W from Wadid. Then he flashes over the wall, uses the ulti, the ulti. as you said, in the end, the app. Jumps out because he gets interrupted. He just, it doesn't end up putting the Gambit lineup. Well, it's going to make it uh, unnecessary to read. As Ooh. A TP in from, is that Jensen? No, oh, that's both of them. Everyone's coming down to the bot side of the map. They want Lonic. The hook is just short from Zazel. But the dunk from Licorice is going to seal two kills in the bot side for Cloud9. And what a beautiful play out of Cloud9. The easiest way to get to your spikes is to accelerate the state of the game. Take yourself a couple of kills and a turret, and it was against the flow. We mentioned the diamond was going to be heading north to hand off that blue buff. Cloud9 read the play. They use the previously mentioned ward. And they smash Gambit. Yeah, just erase the duo lane and take the turret as well. Sneaky continuing to cash in on both the Nice fucking video, you fuck. Let me say something. That mo gnome shit, I know I'm getting old because, you know, when people were doing the, like, you lost the game thing, I was like, God, these are the most autistic people in the world. I'm going to grow out of this shit and I'm never going to deal with this shit again. And now I see this video and it's just like, God, man. It really is just a vicious cycle. It really is just a vicious cycle. 
And now I'm real old, so now I see this shit and it's just like, what happened? And we'll force them into the pit, and eyes on Zazel has the splash. Hex Flash, what a play! First one, Diamond! It's the target they want, they get him down, they'll get Kira as well! The rookie comes up massive for Cloud9! And finally they're able to get the flank set looking for Cloud9, turn the game on its head. They're gonna grab themselves the Baron, and they're going to pick up a 7,000 gold lead. And NA, if any of you are awake at this ungodly hour... Now Saras is the one in danger. Saras being collapsed on by multiple members here. Remember, Steel has no ulti available to get into this one. Heimerdinger's in some trouble, however, the Flash gets him away for now. Skarner making the pull happen back on the Steel here as well, looking to make it a twofer. Vivid gets himself away, Steel will do the same, but it's still more advantage for EDG. And you're just seeing what happens when you invest resources into shutting the mage down and getting your assassin ahead. Seros is 0, 4, and 1. Thanks, Bob, but an ulti from Lodic is going to start the CC chain up. Bubba with a very good last second ult. Needs to try and save Jensen, but Diamond found it. Azazel plays a big pulverize. Sails in the front side. He's getting burnt down by the marksman of Cloud9. And Licorice dives in. Execution is good, but Kira is able to find the tray kill. Now Blabber, he's forced away. A sneak, he's left out to dry. Killer Instinct supercharges out, but he still gets stunned blind by Kira's Q. And Gavin, that might be enough to seal this game. Yeah, it certainly should be once again. And Kira's walls coming up clutch. The Anivia God able to turn the game around and they'll march towards the Nexus. Inhibitor dead. It's two only in the defense. The rookies on Cloud9. Zazel and Blabber must defend a seemingly impossible situation. But Gambit, they'll just ravage down these Nexus turrets. They'll tie up Zazel in the steadfast presence. They'll put the glacial stuff to the back line as well. Here comes the play. Hex flash over the wall. Are they looking to make something happen? Perk's only going to be able to disengage one target. That's the knockup. He's going to move forward with Deed, though. Has he been isolated? Has he been left out? Kotopako in with the Righteous Glory. Wants to flip. Perk's right back into the team. And that is all but Devin with Deed once again saving the day with the Tom Kench ultimate. You've got to love the use of that interaction. Well, did ends up saving. I'm fascinated how he did that because the cooldown should be really. I guess he has maxed it out. No, it's yeah. the ult. He used the, uh, the pastry. Oh. oh. Mind gamed him. Hit in the corner. Still, mid turret getting seed, so I'll have to take it. Uh, Sven, going in, going too far in. What on earth was that wall? He didn't want to get on the wall, Pastry. He wanted to use it to cut off the wave clear that was coming through the jungle. Instead, he jumps on top of the wall. You know, the old man hands strike again. Where's the young kid Blabber willing to take over the keyboard? I don't know about that, because the only way that happens if you tap the R button too many times is to still juggling between mid and top with the supers from bot finally hitting that nexus turret you can see there on the right hand side they gotta go now they only grab zazel they do get sneaky for a bit as well they get snuck back in they all see that from kira sneaky though holds firm does not burn the qss and now he's just gonna rip through the lineup everyone from gamut is going down the shen gets a triple and c9 ride the party bottle into the base and onto the next stage of world it has been a year of turmoil but in the last game when it matters most they push through do you decide to fight this now? It looks like EDG is going to turn it around instead on their own volition. Steel's taking very low, flashing himself away. Vivid looking to go in, find the team fight CC. Does manage to get it down onto a couple. Still going to be taken down by Scout. Heavy goes into the back line to find Eyeboy. That'll at least clean up some of the damage on the side of DFM. But EDG may yet be able to take him down. Ray's going to solo out Unipon if he isn't careful. As Evie finally falls to Mako. And Ray is going in and claps him right back into the spawn platform. And EDG made the smart call there. Not committing to the back. Yes, ahead of Kira in that 1v1. And it is constant triple lane pressure currently. It certainly is. So they need to be able to withstand this because Cloud9, this split, hasn't necessarily played, you know, that mid lane, win lane, win game style of league as they go in top lane. Licorice, no flash, ulti in for the Nocturne, but Licorice gonna try and fight his way out. No chance at all, though. And Stayhouse grabs himself a kill. Yeah, very strange that Stayhouse took that one. Would have been great on Diamond, racing towards the Warrior enchant. Would have been a big deal for the Nocturne. First gank, a success, however. And we'll see whether they can pick Blabber. Baron becomes a very real objective for this team, not just Hurt. And that's uh, music to Gambit's ears, certainly. They're a team that has always played around Baron. 
Has ulti out, gonna find a pick. Sneaky dead already. Lonic just finds the snipe. And now Zazel left out to dry on the front side of the fight. C9 trying to find something as Blabba peppers Edward with arrows. But Gambit, they've got more than enough coverage. They will get out safely. And they'll take the pick. And no ultimate use from Blabber this time. They still knew that they could rip him back if needed. And you can see that this uh, Gambit lineup right now is just rolling. Their siege underneath turrets is so strong. First off, everything is actually engaged on the mid lane. Yeah, again, all in the mid side. Uh, they are going to grab Lodic there. Spencerian just dives onto his face. A little assault is also going to get burnt. He flashes out to make sure the rest of his carries are safe. Lucrish, though, may be too far forward. Kira is maybe going to thread the chain through. He does grab the shot down. Snipes Licorice through the traffic. Oh, that was very close. Sejos gets the ult. Yep, gets the knock up there. There's the move back as well. Diamond finds the flick. And that's another pick for Gambit. Yeah, it certainly was. And all of a sudden, Gambit just continue the fight. This time it's Cloud9 that starts it off without the teleport of Stay Horse being.